In this TaxLayer Pro Web video, we're going to be covering how to create a new tax return. In other words, how to start a return. Well, just so happens that that's also the first item at the top of the screen. Start a new tax return. So to begin, we'll click Select. This will give you the opportunity to enter your client's social security number and we'll have to confirm it. We'll put it in twice. And I'm going to confirm. And we'll click on Start Return. This gives me the 7216 Consent to Use Tax Return Information dialog. I'm going to click OK on that. And the next question we're asked is what the filing status is for our client. Now in our program, you're presented with basically an option, or better yet, an opportunity at pretty much every juncture. If you don't feel comfortable, or if you have questions regarding the correct input on the tax return, you have the I know what I'm doing side, and then you have the please help me side. So with the filing status wizard, if you're not sure what to select, then use the wizard. But if you do know what to select, just click Head of Household and click Continue. And we'll put in our basic information. The Social Security number is already there. We'll enter the date of birth. And his occupation will say he's a tester. The taxpayer can't be claimed as a dependent on anyone else's return, so we're going to leave all these check boxes alone. And now we'll enter the street address. And the zip code and the city and the state will automatically fill once I enter the zip code we'll enter in a telephone number and what I'm going to do is enter two telephone numbers we're going to assume this client may want a bank product and in order to obtain a bank product you're going to have to enter in two telephone numbers And there's our client's two telephone numbers, and I'm going to click the Continue button. But before I do that, let me just point out a couple of things here on this screen. If you need to go back, say to correct your filing status, you can click the Filing Status button, or you can continue forward. And also at this point, I want to point out that you can see at the top that the header is working from left to right. We started out at Filing Status and we move to personal information and our next stop will be dependents. Over here on the left hand side we start with enter the form number if we know which form that we're after in the return we can just enter the form number here go straight to it. Our basic information which is what we're doing now is why you see the big red dot next to it notice that it's in bold type. Next is the federal section health insurance, the state section, and we make our way down the return. So next I'm going to click continue and jump over to my dependent information. I'm going to click yes that I want to input that basic information about the dependent. I'm going to enter the name of the dependent, Jeremy, and if I just hit the tab button it'll pull the last name of the dependent for it if it's the same as the taxpayer. Otherwise, I could just type right over it. If Jeremy has a different last name, I can just type right over it. I'm going to enter his date of birth. And his social security number. And 
there's a checkbox here. I could check if the dependent does not have a social security number or an ITIN. I'm going to select a relationship. It's my son, the client's son, lived with the client for 12 months. None of the other checkboxes apply. So I'm going to click continue. And one other thing that I uh, did want to mention that if I do check this box, if the dependent does not have a social security number or an ITIN, the program will prompt you to complete a W7. So again, moving forward, I'm going to click the continue button. Now, if I had another dependent to enter for this particular tax return, I would simply click the add button enter his or her information and click continue. But we're not going to add any more dependents on this return so we'll click continue which will drop us down into the federal section. Now we're going to cover this section in another little video but I just wanted to make certain that we know how to start a return we know how to enter the filing status and if we needed to to use the filing status wizard we then entered our taxpayer information from top to bottom. If we had left anything incomplete that was mandatory, the program would have flagged us and prevented us from moving forward till, until we had completed that information. Then we jumped to our dependent screen, entered the dependents information, and then as you can see, jumps us into our federal section. So that's how we create a tax return. That's the basics of creating the account or creating a file. Hopefully, you found that as simple as I did. Next, we'll move on to the federal section of the tax return.